uh, once we already register account here, and if we have started lab, uh, lab so next I'm going to uh, first give a short introduction to MSNet, then we go back to this lab to run some hands-on tutorials. So I will also go back to this slide from time to time, so in case you forgot the URL, we can still get it. So uh, the schedule here is like, uh, so because it's a four hour session, I don't think we can do a four hour long session, it's too long. So we would like to break into two sessions. So for each session, it lasts about two hours. So we first, uh, for each session, we first uh, briefly introduce MSNet for the key features in a short time. And then I would like to introduce two important classes there. One is the undimensional arrays. The second one is the symbolic expressions. Um, Next, I'm going to uh, introduce a very simple example for fact matrix factorization on the recommendation systems to demonstrate how to implement a program in MSNet. And then, then I will left for certain minutes for you can try just a bunch of very advanced features to reproduce the state of the art in your networks. You can try by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, then we can also a uh, answer questions here. So then we start a start over to the next session. So um, you can stay here to try more examples. So the lab will be run on three hours. So you can try the these two instances uh, play by, by yourself. So OK. Um, I'll start by a brief introduction. So as we know, deep learning recent days have been have a great success on multiple applications. For example, image understanding, speech recognition, or also NLP. So we can see a very successful deep learning trend on the last uh, past uh, 10 years. So one of the example, one of the problem here that 20 years ago, we used very short, shallow neural networks. For example, neural network only have tens of layers. But nowadays, each neural network, in the state of the art neural network, maybe have hundreds of layers. So it has a few, a few problems. The first is that it's pretty hard to define a new network because it's so long to construct. For example, to construct this Google Inception new network in cafe, take 1,000 lines of product buffer text. The second is that once the new network goes to large, the more computations we need for each example. For each Intel CPU, it only have 0.5 uh, teraflops per second. For the rest of the GPU card, you only got five terabyte flops. But for a very deep neural network, each example takes terabyte of uh, flops. So this means each GPU or each CPU can only process a few examples per second. So this is bringing a huge computational problem. The third one is that once the neural network goes deeper, the, the memory increases linear with the layers. It's not a big problem for CPUs, but for GPUs, each GPU only has 5 to 10 gigabyte of memories, so it's pretty hard to run very deep network on GPUs. So uh, given these challenges, we try to bring a new deep learning library it's called MSNet to focus on three uh, cases. One that we want to have users very flexible to write program about, about deep learning, on the, on the second, we want to make the program very efficient. And finally, we want to make the library runs everywhere. So I will briefly introduce six features, major features of, MN, uh, of MSNet here. The, third, the first that um, I will give more detail about this point on the latter because it's a little bit hard to understand from here. So, on a deep learning program, usually you have two parts. The first is to construct a neural network. It's a, it's a so uh, you, you often see as a picture. The second is how to update these parameters using the optimiz optimization method. So the first case is that it's very is computational bounded. While the, for the second case, we want a very flexible programming layer. So in this case, MSNet using a very two kinds of programming interface here. The first is that we use the symbolic program to define neural network. We can heavily optimize this computation and the memory usage. The second is that we use an imperative program 
to allow the flexibilities to write any optimization algorithms. So we will show these two kinds of uh, programming APIs in a, in a minute. And the second thing about neural networks is that writing a parallel program is pretty hard, especially for deep learning, you have hundreds of layers. So you want, you, if you want to do data communications by hundreds of layers, it's pretty hard to guarantee the correctness. So in MSNet, we try to automatically parallel the program. For example, here, we define a, a tensor, a matrix here, and do C equals to A, the matrix time plus two, and B equals the matrix plus one, and then do another one. So because the second and the third sentences is not correlated with each other, so then we can run in parallel. So the background, we automatically discover which one can be run parallel and do that for you. So I show I briefly show some example here. We try the ImageNet using on a single machine use eight uh, K80 GPUs. What you can see that um, the fix shows that for different the, for the state of the art neural network. For example, this is the first the these three are just the ImageNet winners. For if we increase the number of GPUs, even people like write a serial program. So you, people don't think there's multiple GPUs, but the system can automatically parallel for you. So if we go to even go 16 GPUs, we close to a most ideal case speed up here. Also, the thing, the same apply to a distributed program. So if you have multiple machines, also MSNet can run the same program for you. Here, we, use, we still use the ImageNet example here with the EC2 instance, GPU instance, instance this is the, the instance we're going to use today. We try the Google Inception Neural Network. So what we can see that from each epoch, each epoch means the data pass, and the wax is the test accuracy. Using a single machine, using a 10 machine, the, the convergence rates are very similar. More interesting here is that at the beginning, the single machine converged a little bit faster, but at the end, even 10 machines are converged faster comparing to the, have better test accuracy comparing to the single machine. So for the time, if we run one machine to 10 machines, we have a almost a perfect speed up here. These slides I just copied from Carlos Gaston's uh, keynote slide from the Data Summit uh, hosted in San Francisco a month ago. They evaluate, they evaluate MSNet with TensorFlow. So they increase the number of GPUs and test the speed up comparing to a single CPU. So as we can see, MSNet is almost a linear uh, speed up comparing when we increase the number of GPUs. Uh, TensorFlow, its behavior is strange here. Um, it's like uh, when we run more than, I think more than two GPUs, its behavior very slowly. Um, one of the problem that we heard is that TensorFlow use a very use open source the Google RPC. This is not very optimized. So the open source version is a little bit slower comparing to the internal usage. So this is, I don't think TensorFlow will be around so slow at the internal of Google. Um, another feature is that MSNet provide multiple front-end language. This is because we run the open source community at the beginning. We find our users have different requirements. Most of the users use Python. This is the language we want to demonstrate today. But only 50% of users use Python, actually. Um, so people use Spark, like Scala. Also, we, we see a, a rapid growth of our users in the last year. Um, Julia is like, it's similar to MATLAB. So it's open source of MATLAB, you can think like. So both people like, people like MATLAB may be like Julia. And even, just, we, even we have a JavaScript binding. So using JavaScript, you can put all this program within a browser so that you, don't, you do not ne necessarily have a GPU machine or install everything, GCC, something like that. Once you have a browser, you can run all the things. So, um, but all this front end languages goes to the single C++ back end. So I, we are not discuss uh, too detail here. The thing that even we have different languages, so the implementation is just the simple. It's like we just implement in C++ plus plus and port, uh, forward to the front end language. And also, because all these computations 
runs on the C++, there's, there's no deep performance bottleneck here. Um, well, the, another thing that we try to work at is the memory optimization. This is because different to TensorFlow developed by Google, they are pretty rich. So uh, MSNet is developed by several PhD students across the US. So uh, most of them are use very low end GPUs. For example, the GTX 980, you only have four gigabyte memory if you want to run a very deep neural network. So the other guy only ha have 12 gigabyte, you only have four gigabyte. What you can do is that, okay, you need to optimize the memory usage. So we have a bunch of compiler technologies to optimize the computational graph to optimize the memory usage. So in average, we can see the training. For training, we, we have two times speed up, two times the uh, improvement of the memory usage. For prediction, this goes to four times. We also have more aggressive way so you can do more aggressively to pay a little bit of computation overhead. I'm going to show example here. This is a newer art. It's also on the, this demo is on the uh, hands-on tutorial you can try by yourself. So this example, we try to match the style picture to the content uh, picture. So this is the picture, it's a one megabyte, uh, one megabyte pixel pictures it take from my office at CMU. So we can run these large images within eight gigabyte, uh, six gigabyte of memory. So it's just a half a year ago. Nowadays, we can run a even larger memories. And the last thing I want to say that MSNet can be portable to a bunch of different devices. So we can run on Linux, Mac, Windows. We can also run some mobile devices. For example, we can put all these core libraries, it's a, all the C++ libraries, into a single C++ file with no dependency. So it's pretty easy to run there. So example, so this is a Android developer to run MSNet on the Android. So basically, you train the model on the distributed setting and run the model on the mobile. So each time you take a picture, it do a real-time recognition. So it's a prompt, prompt uh, say what uh, you see on the picture. The other one is that we try, we have JavaScript bonding. So if we run, uh, so all this model can run on the browser. And the final example here, this is we try on the GTC, on the GPU uh, technical conference on the uh, earlier this year. We try to bind a TX1, is an embedded system, onto a flying drone. So we can run real time de detection algorithms on the drone. So uh, this is on, on fly, and you can see that it's not so stable, but we can perfectly attract that people. So, okay, this is a, a very brief introduction of MSNet. N next, I'm going to try, I'm going to try uh, the hands-on app. Yes, 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 sure. For who just uh, uh, coming in the minutes, you can go the events uh, dash AWS dot quick lab to register account by using email. Or then you go the classroom six 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 zero to find the MSNet hands on tutorial. Then if you get get there, you click the start start lab. So I, I'm going to show a step here. So if it goes here, I can click a start lab. Um, oh, I should be not click here, so it's fine. So it takes a few minutes, actually. Um, well, great. So, <laughs> so once you get run, there's a button here is additional info. If if you click this one, if you didn't see, you close the con uh, con connect the tab, and you have additional information here. If you click it, there's a URL. Just uh, copy this URL in the browser. You will go to a um, IPython notebook. <laughs> well.
well, when, when, when it's finished, you maybe, if you go to URL, maybe it says refuse to connect, it maybe take another one minute because um, setting, uh, make the EC2 instance running take a while. Well, that's. Yeah, because a large of number of users to try to allocate the same EC2 instance, it take it read, to read the same image. It take more time uh, compared to user. So if you click the URL, what usually look like is it's like uh, um, let me <laughs> find. Uh, 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 uh. Yes. So the link you go to, it should be looked like that. Just creating problem? You need to install IPython before? No, it's already installed. So uh, once you are done, I think uh, my is ready. Uh, yes, so if you click this additional information, there's a URL here. You click, click it, select it to open in a, in a new lab. Um, it takes another minute to running for the IPython notebook. Oh, you. Do you have, do you have the slides online? E slides? The, the notebook, you mean? Yes. This one? Okay, okay, call it. So the classroom is like uh, dash classroom 6660. You will see a click, a start lab button here. Do you have a question mm -hmm. about the input line? Mm -hmm. It runs on the CPU. So uh, it runs on both CPU. You, if you do, most of the user just run on CPU. So it's fine. It's usually just a little bit slower. We can also run, if you have multiple GPUs also on wrong, multiple GPUs, so um, it's okay. <coughs> Have you already get the link? So, is the link running? <laughs> well, sorry about that. Uh, I just joined Amazon AWS, and uh, one month ago, I hope to fix it in a few times. <laughs> I know this is the infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure is not so great. We can improve in the end of this year. We have. There's more. There's a lot of things going on there. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, it's on the GitHub. Um, we will release a doc image so you can run, try. We will release the MI. This is, if you have EC2 account, you can just grab that instance and launch it running. Or if you have Docker, we can install the thing on Docker so you can still run. So all this, so all the tutorials on the DMC GitHub is all, are already public. But we just uh, to add some more instructions how to set up all these things. Well. <laughs> Um, it's uh, Linux or Windows or Mac. Linux. Linux is perfectly fine. So you just uh, compile MSNet and then you can run here. Okay, no, but I mean like the tutorial. Can I open like the, the IPython so it runs? Um, my computer will run the Amazon instance. I suggest to run the EC2, so you need to install a bunch of IPython ah, notebooks. Uh, so there's a dependency there. Right, yeah. So we're going to release a doc image so you can uh, also steps to get this running. Right. 
Um, nope. So, uh, so it's public on the. Um, let me let me show you. It, uh, so MSNet is on the DMC GitHub. So here, the, all the so source code are there. So if we change it to dash uh, notebooks, so all the things are available there. So all these Apache notebooks are already there. So basically, we launch an EC2 instance. So we launch an EC2 instance, compile MSNet, and then git clone that particular notebook so it shows everything there. Yes, so the, all these things are there. Um, So how many of you have already opened this link? Oh, great. <laughs> Not so bad. <laughs> well. Oh, the Wi-Fi problem. So I'm going to wait another one minute, and then we go to start. If my link doesn't work, it's fine. I have another one. <laughs> So here's a story about this quick, quick lab. Um, I start work on this on last Friday, uh, but the quick lab did oh it's running now. So my quick lab the quick lab didn't accept, cannot assess a GPU instance on Amazon. So um, they filed a request to Amazon. So the quick lab is a different company. They work with Amazon. So uh, then, but the, no response. I just say oh you need to get it done by Monday because I'm not going to run the GPU instance. So what they gonna say? What they try to do is that within Amazon, usually you have problem. You just issue a ticket. So each ticket have different security level. The level one goes to uh, Jeff Bezos directly. So we should do not fire this one. The level two actually broadcast all the whole company. So this is usually a major down. For example, EC2 is down. You fire level two uh, ticket. So level three that if it it just means if you do not solve this one, the whole group didn't work. So you broke the whole group. Level four or five is just for, for individual use. So they first tried to fire level four, nobody responds. They increase to level three, nobody responds. <laughs> and then change to, OK, so they change the content. If you do not solve it, Muli, we are not run the tutorial like on the KDD and change to level two. So all this company knows that. I'm going to run he something here. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, the guy just work at the night, at like 10 p.m. Friday night, to solve this problem. <laughs> Sorry for him. <laughs> okay, so once we open this one, um, if you do not familiar with I personal notebook before, I go a quick uh, walk through here. So, on the notebook, it's a bunch of cells. It's called. So each one is a cell. So you can run a cell. Uh, if you click the run button, it's like a triangle here. You can run a cell. Let me zoom in. So if you click the run here, you can run this. So a cell can be a document or some a bunch of Python code. Uh, if usually it runs very fast. So but sometimes for the training loop, it maybe pretty slow, or if it's the first time to launch on the GPU kernel, maybe take uh, one or two minutes. So you can, if you think it's too slow, you can stop it by click this button. So if it, if it doesn't work, you can still change, click the kernel, can restart. This is to restart the whole process. There's a circle here, means that if it's empty, it means it's idle. If it's a solid uh, circle, it means the thing is running. So. Here today, we're going to go through a several basic concepts here. Uh, so in this front page, we have 
two basic concepts. The ones that on the array, I already mentioned that is imperative, imperative programming. The other way is a sim symbol, is like a symbolic programming. So these are two key concepts here. And next, I'm going to run a matrix factorization demo here to show how to the whole pipeline, how it works. So there's a lot of advanced examples. For example, we have a how to build LSTN from scratch. It's a, there's a little bit more co code there. So also how to implement this one state of the art algorithm on the last year KDD. So there's also the whole the code out there. Um, if you if you're interested in computer vision, we also have uh, to use a convolution network to run a writing digit recognition example here. And if you still want to see more examples, um, we have a, we have run a tutorial on GTC to earlier this year. It's more like um, it's more computation uh, computation of computer vision focused. Uh, for example, you can try the neural neural art. I just show a demo um, in the last slides. Also, you can run a try LSTN, or you can convert convert your two D pictures into three D pictures. So uh, next, I'm going to first try the ND array first. Um, okay, uh, if you open that one, so ND array is of the basic main objects on MSNet. It is a multi-dimensional uh, array. If you're familiar with LumPy in Python, it's pretty similar to LumPy ND array. If you do not familiar with Python, it's fine. We're going to go through every detail about ND array on this example. So a multi-dimensional array, you can think it's just a table of a bunch of numbers. So here, for example, a point on a 3D space is just a X, Y, Z is a one-dimensional array just with a length of three. So you can, so here is the example shows a 2D arrays, just a matrix. It's a two by three matrix. Those so in Python, all these things are stored in the row major. This is the last dimension, one, two, one, zero, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we first uh, on the last dimension, and then we go to the second last dimension. So it's a little bit different comparing to MATLAB, so use a column major one. So the ND array have a bunch of attributes. So first is the shape. This is the, how the, the size of, the length of each dimension. And the, the D tab, the data tab, is give you the type of the element. Um, the size is the number of, num the number of elements in the array, just the, the product of the element of the shape. So here's two things different to a LumPy ND array. The first is a context, which specify which device is running. In default, it's CPU, so you can run all the things on CPU. If you change to GPU, it will run on the GPU. I'm going to show next. The last thing is the handle. This is because MSNet or the kernel, the core libraries is on C++. This is just a C pointer to the C++ objects. Usually, we don't need that. But if we want to write some C++ code, we can pass this handle to the internal usage. So here's a basic example here. So if you, this, this is a code cell, you can run it. And let me try run it. Um, so the first time running uh, take a while. <laughs> it's, uh, it's because this is because the EC2 instance needed to load all these CUDA libraries, maybe on the distributed file system into the memory, especially there's more than one people use that, it takes more time. So here you show that the pipe, the, the solid circle is, is running. So, the, oh, okay, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, so then in this example, we just import MSNet as MX, MX so to short to MSNet. Then we create a one times two arrays here. So we pass the Python array into MSNet to the dot array function. And let me zoom in for a while. <laughs> so then next, I'm going to print, print, print several attributes of the array. Want to print the shape, the size, the data tab, and the context. Then we will see that the context is CPU. The data tab is float six, uh, 32 float. This is a default using by MSNet. Oh, the, the shape is 1 by 2, and the size is 2. And the tab is and the array dot and the array. 
So this is, we create one and get an attribute here. So next I'm going to show how to create an array here. As you know, as you can already see that the dot array method can accept the Python object. It's a array, a list or array or tube of numbers or just a, a list of a list. So in this case, we create a one dimensional array. On the next, uh, next uh, case, we create a two dimensional array. So if you're familiar with NumPy, we can, we can, you can create a matrix using NumPy and then pass to MSNet. So here, we, I first create a NumPy matrix C and give to MSNet. So it's all, all fine. The next code shows that we can change the data tab to MSNet. So in default, it's using 60, uh, 32 float. We can change to int uh, 32 bit int or half of the float. Um, sometimes we want to use a low, depth, low precision for, format, for example, uh, integer or half of load to accelerate the computing. I will go back a little bit back uh, in a minute. Um, if we do not know the content at the beginning, you can create a shape, just to create an array with a, with a particular size and then give value later. For example, these are a few functions create all zero matrix with two is a two by three matrix, or create all one matrix, no full matrix with each value with seven, or just the empty matrix, all this content are just random. So this is basically how to create an array. Um, it works like normal. So next I'm gonna show how to print an array. Um, we're a little bit lazy here, we just uh, convert uh, MSNet and the array into NumPy and use NumPy's printing function to print uh, the arrays. So in NumPy, the order is like following. So the last axis is print from left to right because all these arrays are stored by rows. And then we print, print the second to last dimension on the top to bottom. So if it's a matrix, it's normal here. So we create two by three matrix, print this one, we got a two by print matrix. If you have more than two dimensions, we just stack the, the rest of the dimensions from top to down one by one. So here example also shows that if you have a very large matrix, you can print as well, just to, just to sample some element here. So anyway, if you, so a good thing, if you do not use a notebook before, you, you can change anything code and you can run it. For example, I want to, um, this uh, D equals to create uh, maybe still one zero, maybe three by four, or maybe a large one. And I can print as well. So I can run it. So it's a three by four by two. We first print the last dimension two on left to right, and then the second the last dimension from top to down, the first dimension is just a stack over the top to down here. So you can change uh, any code that you like and try to run different things. Um, if something goes wrong, it's fine. I just give an error message. It should not crash down the thing. <laughs> here is a little bit thing about tricky thing about using Python. If you do not use Python before, so this is a little bit confusing. So this is about how to copy the things. In default, Python copy by reference. So in this example, I create A, I assign B to A, uh, assign A to B directly. So what it goes to here is just to copy the reference. It didn't allocate any new arrays here. So if we, we can say that, okay, B is still equal to A here on this code. The next shows that if you pass an NDRA by a function, you also copy by reference. So I first, in this function, I print the ID of X. The ID is the unique ID of the objects in Python. So when I pass A to the function, or just the print the ID of A, this is equal. So if you pass a, a array to function, or just the copy by default, just by reference. So this means that it's pretty cheap, because you just copy the reference. But the problem that if you modify any of the, if you modify A, it also applies to B. So if you modify one thing, you apply to all these reference copies. So the second type of copy is also often called deep copy. 
that we actually copy the content. So we create a new object, cre uh, copy the contents. So uh, an easy way here is that you just call the dog copy method. So in this method, allocate a new array, copy the value, and return that new array. So in this case, B is not 2A anymore. So you change the content of A, you do not change the B. But the problem of this method is that each time always allocate a new member, uh, a new ND array. If you want to avoid that, so for example, you already allocate the memory for B, if you don't want to create another one, you can use an in-place copy. So you can either use copy to method or the slice operator, the square bracket to. So in this case, I create a B and then print the ID of B. Then I use the square bracket colon to refer to all element of B equal to A, so, so copy A to B, and then print the ID of B, you, you see that the identity are zero, so we didn't allocate any new thing here. Also, you can call A copy to B, so we also didn't change anything uh, about B. So this is all about copies, so copy by reference or copy by values. Next, next I'm gonna show some basic operations. Um, so given two arrays, it's like, uh, it's like NumPy, all these operations is on elemental-wise. So this is, if you want to write A plus B, it's elemental-wise plus. If I minus C is elemental-wise. If you do a power to power two and do a apply a thing on the elements. So basically it's all you, all you can imagine. Um, so we implement a bunch of operators here. It's, it's not as complete as NumPy, but it should cover all the basic usage. The only thing here is that, similar to NumPy, the star is used for element-wise multiplication. So if you want to have matrix-to-matrix -matrix multiplications, we use a dot, um, the dot function. So here, um, b equals to element-wise a times b, c is to the actual matrix-to-matrix -matrix multiplication. So you see the results are different. So all this about functions, each time you call it, you just allocate a new content and then return to the result. If you want to avoid allocation, you can still use the uh, assignment operators plus equal times equal. So in this case, you, you didn't see the content of B changes. So I add A into B, but the B, the identity of B is still as the same as, the same as before. So this is the basic operations. Um, the next I'm going to how to index uh, to index uh, operator. So uh, we can use the slice operator to in to in slice on the first dimension. So here I create a and black uh, square bracket colon to get all this matrix, or we can get one and two of the the first dimension. So remember that this is apply on the first dimension. If you want to slice on the different dimension, you can use slice axis to the different function here. Mm. Next, I'm gonna show the shape uh, manipulation. So the first function is the reshape. So if you do not change the number of elements, you can reshape the matrix into any shape you, have, you want. It didn't change the actual content, it just changed the shape function. So um, I create A, it's a four by six matrix, and then I can reshape into a two by three by four matrix. So it's, it's, it's pretty useful if you have different neural network, I'm going to discuss later. So each one maybe have different shape, you want to match the shape between different layers. Also you can concat the arrays along a particular dimension, and this is what we usually do. Or the reduce function, for example, the sum, summation, sum, uh, sum all this element on the array, or sum on a particular dimension. So different to reduce, we have broadcast, we can replicate the array on a particular dimension. For example, um, I probably not go very detailed about it here. So for example, we have a matrix two by one by one by three, and then we can broadcast to two by two by two by three. So in this case, we replicate 
two times on the, sec on the second dimension, also replicate two times on the third dimension. Um, we can also broadcast and do some basic operator here. For example, if we have A and B, we want to their own different shape. If we want to do mod plus, in default, we want to match the shape. But you can use broadcast plus so that we try to broadcast into a common shape and do the uh, plus here. So OK, so up to here is all the basic operations. So you, what you, also, you can see that there on the NumPy, you can see there on the, on the other libraries. So next, I'm going to show a few advanced usage here. This is make who, what makes the MSNet different to other libraries. The first is the GPU support. The current uh, library you open or already have a single GPU here. So you can run all these examples on the lab. Remember that for each ND array, there's a context specify which device you want to go. So in default, it's just a MX, uh, MX dot GPU or oh, dot CPU, sorry. And then, but you can change to MSI dot GPU zero. This is the first GPU. Or if you have more than one GPU, you can change to MSNet dot GPU one. So here, this example, I show that this function create two matrix and do multiplication and print the result. So in default, we use the, we use the CPU. So we call this function. So you can see it is wrong. The result shows wrongly on the GPU zero, and you get the result. You can do that. You can change the default context to MSNet dot GPU. So if you run that one, let me try that one. <laughs> well, so because it's the first time, I just run the CP GPU, take a little bit of wire comparing to usual to launch the kernel. So um, then you will show that it's running on the GPU as, you, um, as expected. So in this case, we just change the default context to GPU. What you can, the other way you can do that, you can change, you can specify the context when create an array. This, for example, in this case, I create an array just on the CPU zero, a GPU zero, another array, an array on the GPU zero. And I do multiplication, and so get the context should be also on the GPU zero. So currently, MSNet only support that if you run the things let me stop that one. <laughs> that happens a lot. So, in currently, Amazon only support that you run two devices operations on the same device. So they either on the all on the CPU or on the first GPU. So if you want to do operations on different CPUs, you need to copy the memory by yourself. So we have a bunch of function to do that. The first, yeah, I stop it. And so, um, so here. So I first create A on CPU, B on C GPU, C on GPU. So I want to do this. Then I, want, I can copy the content of A into C by the copy too. So it we are analysis of the devices. So you can auto, automatically copy for you. Then I can run, so then they are on, both on the GPU, I can run all the things. The other way that you can run the S in contact to a particular array, so this shows that it will copy the, the same thing as before. You just uh, create another array, sit on the particular device, and copy the value, and then you can get the context. So I can run this one. Yes. So this is about GPU. The second thing, we want to save and load the, device, the content of the new array. The first, the first way that if you use Python, a usual way that to pickle the object. So it's as usual, we can pickle a new array and save to something and load the back from something. Here, I'm going to show a different way to do that. MSNet have a function called save and load. You can load data or save data into a binary format directly, and uh, you can load it from from uh, not for a binary device also automatically. Or you can also save a dictionary of arrays. You can load a dictionary of arrays. So, but the thing 
there's two advantages comparing to load and safe to the Piccolo uh, solutions. The first is that remember that MSNet have more than one front, uh, front uh, languages. For example, Python is just one. If you usually we train the thing maybe in Python, but if we want to deploy the model, we may be run on the C++ library. Just as we don't, so the, the server don't need to install all these Python things. Or maybe you can train the model here, we want to run the load of things on to, into Spark. This is a Scala for the end language. So the save and the load is just a cross, can be crossed to different languages. So you can, for example, here I show that I save this array in Python, but I can load into R, so still get the same result. The second way is particularly useful if you train the things into distributed systems. So for example, if you already configured S3, so then MSNet can save and load arrays into S3 direct directly. So if you have HDFS, you have Hadoop or Spark, you can also save and load data into the distributed file system. So this is about save and load. The last thing, also the very important thing, people don't need to aware of that thing, but it's good to know it, it is there. So this is a lazy evaluation and auto parallelization. So MSNet uses lazy evaluations. So if you write a code, for example, um, let me show a good example here. It's maybe too complicated. <laughs> um, so I use this exa as example. So mm, let me see this too. Okay, so let's use this as an example. We create A, we create B, and we do a plus of A and B. So what do we do is that all these functions are just to push these operations into backend C++ engine. So up to this point, up to this point, we maybe didn't execute this one here. So we can just push the Python front end thread, just to push the operator into backend. But up to this point, I want to print the result. So this Python thread is blocked here until all this computa uh, computation finish. So this is particularly useful for front end languages. You have heavy uh, overhead. For example, um, you maybe each call take a bunch of clients. And so in this case, you just uh, push the thing into C++ engine. So we, you do not lose any performance. And also at the same time, you can execute the other things. So I'm going to show example here to demonstrate it exists. So I call do function, just to, just to do a matrix, matrix multiplications and return the ND arrays. So the way it is actually wait this ND array to be read. This is block here until all this is readable so uh, we can make the thing happen here. So here I sh record the time and create something, do something, and print the time now, and then wait. So let me run that. So what you can see that up to this point, we just uh, push the thing into the back of the engine. So it only take uh, a few minutes, a uh, million second. Then we wait here until all this computation are done. So it take more than a close to one second. So, um, we will show this is very useful if we work with a symbolic expression we are going to introduce later. Another thing that because we use lazy evaluations, we are able to analysis the data dependencies between operations. So in this case, B and C can be executed in parallel because there's no data read and dependencies. No. So then the engine, backend engine, try to optimize all this in parallel for you. So here I show example here. So here I create a matrix A on CPU and I create matrix B on GPU. So I run A multiple times, this runs on CPU, and then I, I wait the result back and do multiple times on B and then wait it back and print the time. So this is, you know, oh well, it takes a while. Mm. So it take about two seconds and then so this is one to run C or uh, run just a uh, no parallelization here. So in this case, I also push the CPU workload first, then push the GPU workload. Then after that, I wait here. So in this case, the backend engine is able to 
try to parallel all the things because you wait at the end. So I'm going to show here. Hope it will be fast. Okay, perfect. Perfect two times speed up here.